Matthew here from fiberglasssupply.com. In this video, we're going to show you how we do a resin infusion test panel. We have a project that we want to do. It's a stand-up paddle board mold set that we want to infuse a carbon fiber board out of. Before we just dive in and load that mold up with expensive carbon, we're going to run a test panel. This test panel is going to show us what the laminate is going to turn out like, but more importantly for infusion, it's going to show us how fast it infuses with the given resin system and laminate stack that we're using. We have some options. We're gonna run actually more than one test panel, but you're gonna see the first one today, where we can change the flow media, or we can change the laminate stack to get the resin either to move faster or slower. So in a test panel, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up similar laminate stack, similar distances that we wanna flow in the part, and then we're gonna run it. So that's why in this part, you're gonna notice it's narrow, but we're flowing on the long direction, because we wanna see, can we flow that resin 40 inches or so. And on this part, we want to feed from one end to the other instead of the middle because we don't want the print of our feed line down the middle of the board. Uh, we want to feed off of the board itself, across it to the other side and not print where our feed line comes in. There's some other things we could do to mitigate that, but that's what we're testing for right here. Here's the video and enjoy. But real quick, before we jump into that, our laminate stack in this uh, part is going to be one layer of a plain weave six ounce carbon, one layer of a two millimeter Soric core mat. This core mat uh, has channels in it, these little hexagons, and that's what will act as our flow media in this case. If we wanted it to flow faster for some reason, we could put a flow mesh over the whole thing like we normally do with salt laminate parts, uh, but we're gonna feed through the core mat today. And then on the other side of that core mat, we have another layer of six ounce carbon. Now let's jump into the video and check out what we did. All right, to get started, Tim has already placed the sealant tape around the perimeter of the glass plate, and now he's loading our laminate stack onto it. Our laminate stack in this case is a layer of six ounce carbon, a layer of three millimeter sort core mat, and a layer of six ounce carbon. The core mat is going to act as our flow media. He is placing some peel ply over it. We really don't need that peel ply other than down here at the end for our resin in and at the other end for our uh, vacuum out and our break area. So we could skip the peel ply in the middle if we wanted to. In this particular test plate, you know, we want to see can we flow about 40 inches uh, with this setup because we want to flow from one side of the part to the other so that we don't get a line or an imprint in the middle of a feed hose. That's why we're checking this. On the mold that we're going to be using we don't have large flanges so what Tim's doing down here is he's putting down the MTI hose. The MTI hose is a hose that has a Gore-Tex membrane on it and it doesn't allow resin into it. And so when we're working on molds that have really tight flanges, it gives us an opportunity to not pull resin into the vacuum system um, and, and get some of the issues that are related to that when you're right up tight to the laminate. So it really allows us to place that hose right next to, and even on some cases, on the laminate. But the MTI hose, because it is a Gore-Tex membrane, uh, and once the resin hits and wraps around that, you're really not getting any more pull. You've got to have a really well sealed up bag. Tim's pleading the bag here so that we have enough excess bag to go around our feeds, our vacuum out, and to make sure that we have bag tight around the edges of the laminate stack. If you don't have the bag tight around there, you get a, a little bridge or a gap where the resin can race through that and it won't give you an accurate result. So he's got the bag sealed up, uh, the pump is on. As you can see, the MTI hose is starting to get kind of wrinkly and pulled against its uh, internal spiral wrap. And with the MTI hose, because you've got that porous membrane on there, uh, it doesn't allow as much air flow through it as like a regular spiral wrap does. So it's gonna take longer to evacuate the bag. In some cases, we'll use a regular vacuum cleaner, like a shop vac, uh, to pull that bag down initially, and then we'll switch over to the pump. Or I'll run a vacuum line through our resin side and pull down through there, get everything sealed up. So it requires that you get a better seal on that bag initially, or it won't pull down. As you can see here on the resin cup, we have some bridging an excess bag. Uh, actually, we don't have enough excess bag is part of the reason we have that bridging. 
So we really should have left more there. In this particular case, it won't hurt us. We'll let it go and you'll see what happens because of that. Um, but normally you want more bag in that area so you're not trying to stretch the vacuum bag down across it uh, and that creates some issues. Tim's going around it now and he's just double checking the seal. He's using a hard roller here. Uh, they work pretty good, although you gotta be careful you don't poke a hole in the bag with them. Um, it has happened, but pretty rarely. I usually just use my thumb. Uh, so you wanna check your corners for sure. Uh, anywhere the tape overlaps, so your corners, the pleats, and then just make sure you go over all the big flat areas. But typically you're gonna find your leaks in the pleats, corners, and any bag penetrations. Once that bag is sealed up, we want to do a drawdown test to make sure that we actually have a good seal. And a drawdown test simply is we've got this under vacuum, <clears throat> we have our full vacuum amount pulled, and then we're going to seal off the pump and watch over a period of time and see how much it drops. Obviously the goal is for zero drop, uh, but depending on the part size and the resin system, gel time, etc., there can be some allowance or tolerance for a certain amount of drop. In this case, we're using a vacuum gauge that reads in millibars. You know, so let's say that we sealed this off for 20 minutes and we came back and it dropped 10 millibars. Uh, we're going to say, okay, it's good enough and go ahead. That is something really on your end you need to decide. So we've done our vacuum drawdown test. It looks good and now we're gonna mix up the resin and shoot the part. In this case, we're using Hydrex 100 infusion resin. It's vinyl ester infusion resin that is initiated with a CHP hardener or initiator. And Tim's just mixing that up here and then we'll get it over here and, and get it going. The way resin infusion works is atmospheric pressure is pushing down on that bucket. And that pressure forces the resin into the mold cavity. And uh, what we like to do in our test panels is we like to mark them. Uh, depending on how fast it's going every minute uh, once it slows down we'll mark it in increments of multiple minutes uh, and that allows us to take that data and then determine what the best setup is going to be um, and if we need to add feed lines where we want to add them at so here's kind of a hyperlapse of that panel filling uh, right there, we're at 17 minutes, 19 minutes, 21. Uh, so it's filling slow, and slow is not necessarily bad uh, because we found over time that, especially on carbon, filling slow gives us better surface cosmetics. <clears throat> and, and we want those nice surface cosmetics. We don't want pitting at the surface. So here's the moment of truth. Uh, the, we've let that panel cure overnight and we're going to demold it and this is when we get to see how it worked out and removing the processed materials here a good practice is to take pictures of all that throw a tape measure on it take pictures before you pull it apart and then wow look at that it's super shiny absolutely glossy the surface looks good uh, no porosity in there which we expect it actually. Um, the Soric, because it, it does absorb resin, gives you pretty resin rich surfaces, uh, but it, it gives you good cosmetics. So here's Michael removing the uh, pill ply from that. We're using Bleed Release B, which is a silicone coated, release coated pill ply, um, but cool. All right, so we had a really successful test shoot. It's always a success when you wet the whole panel out. Uh, what we found out is it takes about 40 minutes to go from one side of the paddle board to the other. My concern is going to be, is that too long for the gel time on our resin? Uh, if it's not, great, we can do that. Uh, if it is, we either need to figure out how we can extend that gel time or we can add a flow media to speed it up or we can move our feed line to the center. Again, I don't want to 
do the feed line in the center because I know we run the risk of getting a print uh, where that line is. And in another video, I'll show you that. We've done that with other parts and gotten that print. And there can also be some porosity issues with having your feed line on the part. Uh, but those are all something we can cover in a different video. Again, successful test shoot. We've got data now that says 40 minutes to go across this for the given conditions and the laminate setup. Uh, we may run a couple other tests. We might add some flow media and we might also stick uh, our feet in the middle and run a couple more plates uh, before we jump over to the parts. Uh, the other data that we gathered from doing this is we know roughly about how much resin this area takes. Uh, so then we can extrapolate that out into the part and we've got a good idea going into it how much resin we need. The cool thing about infusion, if we're going to do the same part over and over, is we can actually really get it dialed in to where it's almost exactly the same every time, uh, which is super nice. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you got any questions, please get a hold of us. Any comments, leave them below. And if you don't mind subscribing, we would appreciate it. Take care.